Thank you to everyone tuning into Jump Roman Tech, where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY. And today I'm going to show you how to mega ohm a three phase compressor using the Subco M500. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jump Roman Tech. So, before we can test any compressor, you need to turn the power off. Always safety first. If you can lock out, tag out, it's always a great idea to do so. Many have been asking how they can check the mega ohms on a three phase compressor using the M500, which is a super affordable mega meter. And I'm gonna show you how to do so. So, we got the power off. Take off our access panel. And here's our compressor. One thing I noticed right away is right here, there is no pressure control here. This right here is your high side, it's your discharge line. So this is a high pressure control. I do see the larger pipe, and this is the suction line, and it's the low pressure control, which is wired. Hopefully, it is up there. I'm assuming it is, but I will confirm that. So there's a chance when you see something like this where the high pressure control is jumped out that this system runs on high pressure. So I want to take a look at the coil. Doesn't look so clean. This is definitely an old unit. Everything is pretty rusted here. So when things like this that you see where you have a high pressure control jumped out is a good chance that the system is running on high pressure. And this was just a quick fix for someone to get out of here to keep this system running. But this isn't exactly the right thing what you should do. Um, since it's running on high pressure, most likely this compressor is running hot. And when the compressor runs hot, you start losing the insulation and in your windings. So what we're going to do today is use the M500 megameter and do an insulation test for the compressor. Before touching any electrical connections just because you shut off that disconnect doesn't mean the power is actually off I did see everything turn off but you always want to double check so you're gonna put your meter to AC volts and I follow the wires and they're coming in straight into this contact there from the bottom so I'm gonna go across zero volts next ones zero volts next one zero volts and if you want to double check go from each line to a ground is there a ground connection don't see any but you could just go to metal honestly zero volts next line to ground zero volts next line to ground zero volts you are now safe to continue this operation so we got the power off let's get to our compressor terminals it's just like a little pop out. Let's see what we got here. Okay, so if we look closely, there is some sort of protection on this compressor. Below here is a thermal overload. So if this compressor overheats, it will shut you down. So at least that's there, but there's a good chance this thing runs hot. It might not, or it might have a good insulation reading, but we're gonna do that and perform it. This video was made for professionals only. You should have a EPA license before touching any type of equipment that has refrigerant. And before using this megameter, I highly recommend you read the manual and understand how a megameter works because running this test, you are applying 500 volts to these windings on this compressor. Safety first, everyone. So the way to check this is you need to isolate your compressor. So by doing that, you gotta take off your wires. And before disconnecting any wires, I always recommend you take a pen and paper, either write this down or take a picture. Personally, I like to take a picture. It saves a lot of time. Just picked up these new Milwaukee gloves and they are awesome. It has this little smart swipe feature where you can actually use your phone and I absolutely love it. So now we know where each wire goes and they are color coded. We're gonna take off our wires. So we're just gonna loosen this up. So 
So now we have everything isolated. We want to get to these three terminals. So when using a megameter, the idea is to go from one terminal to ground, but specifically the casing of the motor. So they always have this little hook here and that's like the best place to do it, but you want a good ground. So considering there's paint on here, you're gonna wanna sand it down a little bit to get the most accurate reading. I actually forgot that, but I do wanna show you how I get up and down from here. I do need to pick up some sandpaper. <laughs> there's no ladder. So, This is how we do it. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. All right, let's sand that down. So I got this abrasive pad. Don't have any sandpaper in the truck, which is crazy. But this will do. Okay, so as you can see, we sanded this down pretty nicely. And before we check anything, just a quick heads up. This unit is from 1998, which is unbelievable. And this looks like it's definitely the original compressor. So let's see how a train compressor holds up. So here's our mega meter and we have two leads. We're gonna take one lead to our terminal and it's really cool because they're actually magnetic. So you could just kind of just like leave it there and the other one we're gonna put to ground. Make sure everything is holding and this is the easiest mega meter by far all you do is press the button but follow the lights to conduct this test is very simple we're going to go from one terminal to ground and we're going to do this for each terminal coming from the compressor so let's start with this one here and here's our ground so we're going to depress our button and we're going to watch our scale as you can see we started at around 200 to 300 and then we went past 1000 and over here it says above 1000, there is no light. This is indicating that we are good. Next, we're gonna check the next terminal and do the same thing. Same deal. We went past the scale above 1000 and above 1000, there is no light. We're gonna do the same thing for the next terminal, for the last one. And once again, we went past the scale of 1,000 mega ohms. This is indicating that we are good. So right there, we started at 150, and then we went past 1,000. After 1,000, it says above 1,000, no light. So if you're in, if you're above 100 mega ohms and going past 1,000, you're without a doubt in the good range. If you would get a reading from what is it, about 30 to under 100, you're running a caution. That insulation inside is burning up. If you're below 30, you're done. Most likely you're already grounded and the, ins the windings are touching the casing. So that's why you really wanna go by the casing. So we went from one terminal to ground. Next, we're gonna go to the next terminal. Went past 1,000. This compressor is good so far. Then we're just gonna check the last terminal. Make sure we're not getting any feedbacks. So, oh, we're caught in here. All right, last terminal to ground. And this compressor checks out. Whoa, 1998, 20 plus years going strong. That is a beautiful thing. You know, they honestly really really don't make them like they used to i'm seeing compressors fail honestly in less than five years these days it's uh it's kind of strange but then again it all has to do with maintenance this and that but on the looks of it 
ain't much maintenance over here and this is super old but this is absolutely amazing so that is how you mega ohm and do a real insulation test for a three-phase compressor from here we're just going to put everything back together close everything up and that is how you check a three-phase compressor using an insulation test and if anybody found this video interesting or helpful please drop a like comment and subscribe as i come out with new videos every week and i'll catch you all next time